Hey guys, my name is Nikolai Yusupov. This video just want to show you how I usually like to mount my equipment for uh, critical care transports, right? So uh, I had another video, right, that shows you how to mount this defibrillator tray. So check check it out, how to actually do it. But once it's patient is over and it's mounted, I usually like to have my uh, monitor here. Uh, it's connected right to the actual tray, right, with the provided belts. If you don't have those belts, you could use right a belt from your uh, long board, right, just to make sure everything is uh, strapped up. So this is my setup for the monitor. If the patient has a line, right, I usually put my pressure bag here, right. Uh, and if he has, uh, you know, anything else like uh, gravity fluids, I may run it here. My pumps, I do not like to place it here. I'll show you what I do with my pumps. Uh, I have this short board here. And the utility of the short board is that if the patient does uh, go into cardiac arrest, you have firm surface uh, when you, you know, want to lay them down, right, in order to perform your chest compressions, right? So this will provide that firm surface. If you have, if you have uh, one pump, I will mount it like this just to make, just make sure this piece doesn't protrude too much out because it may uh, hit your captain's chair. When I have double pump, I usually, my setup is like this. So I, I make sure I have enough uh, uh, of it sticking upright and then what I like to do is I take tape right and then I secure it so it's not moving about so you could I'm not gonna do too much too many rolls but when I'm doing the actual transport out I make sure that this is very much secured right when this, this is secured Right, and this is here. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna mount my uh, IV pumps, and I use uh, right sometimes the sheet here to stabilize the bucket. So this will essentially go like this. So this would be the first pump. This would be the second pump. Now you're gonna tell me, you know, what's what's the utility of this? I'll show you. I'll show you exactly why I do this. Right. So I got my double pumps. If you're running, if you're running your syringes, right? You could put your syringes through here, actually. You know, saline lock somewhere here. Take one from the. This pump can accommodate uh, 20 to 60 syringes, right? So let's say this was, you know, any medication I draw up could be propofol, levofat. So it's in the syringe, it's in your cassette, it's running down. So I have the, the pumps here, right? And the, the why I like it here is you notice uh, I have here is the charger, right? So whenever you have multi drips, let's say you're running double pump, right? You have, uh, let's say three pressers here, right? You have sedation here. If your pump goes out of power and it's running, let's say, levofed, epinephrine, vasopressin, right, or any other vasoactive medications, this shuts off and your patient's uh, map is like uh, 40, 50 to begin with, you know, patient's gonna rest. So what I do the moment this uh, is in the back, right, I'm going to connect this. Notice, right, uh, this particular charger and I want to make another video of this it got bent right so now you do not know the 12 o'clock position normally when we connect it to to charge right it goes through this port here and normally this red dot is a 12 o'clock position but now what are you gonna do you can't we can't put it in right so now I look at these notches in the back see these notches these are gonna go now in six o'clock position when it's not broken like this this is, should be a 12 o'clock position. So now I'm gonna try to align these notches without forcing it into the six o'clock position. And uh, once you connect this right, how do you know you are in uh, when the green light is on? So now it's rotational, you wanna be careful, right? So green light is on, it's charging. Right? And the reason why th these charges are like this is because uh, uh, we try to jump this in we when we should not, it should be very gentle. So when it's when it's new, right, and this is not rotational, this should be at 12 o'clock position. When it's rotational, try to align, see if, you, if it will focus, these notches at six o'clock. 
six o'clock position. We'll do it one more time. Open the latch. Six o'clock. Green light is on. Right. So you will say, right? Uh, you have double pump, right? Uh, how would you? And you and you have only one cord. What are you gonna do, right? So what I'll probably do is uh, uh, during the day I usually alternate when they're charging in the back. Uh, but you could alternate. The issue with these pumps is that uh, when, I, when they're turned on, nothing here indicates uh, the amount of battery life, right? So uh, there's no way to know. And also, right, uh, how long they've been in service, right? The battery is not going to be probably running to the full capacity. So uh, I always try to have it plugged in. You could then perhaps alternate if it's taking you too long, right? Alternate the, the sides. Uh, so why I like uh, these pumps here is that uh, A, right? Um, I have access to the power cord. Two, it's much easier for me to adjust both pumps. I have my syringes here. It doesn't matter if the syringe is, is, is like this or upright, it will still pull because it's uh, it's not via gravity. It's like positive pressure system. So it will still pull your drugs. The the board also provides a firm surface. So let's say I'm, I'm going, I notice patient goes into cardiac arrest. I see, you know, pulseless VTAC or VFib. All I'm gonna do is I slowly lower this down, right? In, in the shape of compressions, right? Probably, I would probably stop my sedation medications or, uh, you know, depending on what you got going, right? So compressions are gone. Are gone. Uh, what else I wanted to show you here, right? Uh, in this setup, right? Sometimes, so that this doesn't fall back all the way, all the way like that, usually the mechanism is strong enough. What you can do is you could take a roll up, uh, rolled up sheet like this, right? And you could also put like tape around it. So reinforce it so that when it plops down, it doesn't, the sheet will not allow it to go all the way down. So, or you could take one individual sheet, roll it, or roll it up under each individual pump. So that's how I like to house them. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is where, where's my ventilator, right? So the ventilator, I usually do not like to place it here. Why? Because when I'm doing my transition, I, I usually place the patient on my ventilator and I want to run some diagnostics. I want to run a full set of vital signs, pulse ox, antidotal, right? I want to do a 12 lead. I want to see how they're tolerating my ventilator, right, uh, compared to the hospital. So I would pull up vital trends on the hospital monitor, and uh, and then I run all my own. I give it usually five minutes. Uh, you will, you should see deterioration, right? What do you notice if the patient deteriorates? You see drop in pulse ox, tachycardia, right? Uh, may changes in antidotal CO2. So if I if I see that, I may need to adjust my vent. Uh, uh, so uh, that's what I like to do. First, I uh, connect my vent and run everything. So where's the vent? The vent is going to be in the back of the stretcher right here, right? I usually put my O2 tank on, on the side. The ventilator sits like that. The ventilator sits like this. Maybe I'll grab it here show them right so the vent the, the reason why the ventilator is operate like this is a I want to I want to see the readouts so when the ventilator is on say same patient when the ventilator is on here is where you see all your alarms right and and I want to know is is it low pressure is it high pressure is it low minute volume is my O2 source uh, right gone so I also I always want to know when it's beeping I don't just click silence I take a look what's going on right and the beauty about it having it here right so this is the high pressure 40 uh, 50 psi hose I believe uh, you could mount to your portable right and you could mount to your main right so you have easy access on both of these uh, sites right so this is usually where I keep it right uh, and then right you always want to monitor all your alarms you know whenever they go on right so usually the, the setup is this right I'm a little come back a little bit right so you see the ventilator uh two pumps right uh, and then you see the motor if you had a transport right where let's say um you know you had to uh have an additional um um iv pump or maybe two then i would start using the pole right so then the third one will go on the pole right usually those uh transports are not that frequent right uh this is a common setup right and yeah if if again if the patient goes in cardiac arrest like i said lower it initiate compressions right uh, so this is the the setup 